So today I'm going to show you how I animate sprites on Friday Night Funkin', at least like the idle animation. So I've already like done uh, the uh, parts for the sprites, I like draw the parts of the sprite so I can animate it afterwards. It makes things a lot easier and more polished looking. Then I just go ahead and animate it by moving those parts, as you can see. How I do idle animations, of course, when I make the parts, I make them in the normal, like, stance that I care, or whatever, like, the, the frame you would basically, well, of them just being there, like, the final frame before, like, the beat again. Then after that, I take the parts and make another frame, which is the first frame, to show, like, how far it moves away from the original frame, if that makes any sense. So it's kind of like working backwards in that sense. You could you could look at it that way. So that's what I'm doing here right now, kind of adjusting how the first frame will look like. And then of course you gotta make that frame like slowly transition over to um, the final frame. And yeah, um, of course like that that is how uh, FNF sprites tend to be like. Uh, the first frame being them like kind of bopping in some way and then it kind of moves back up to normal stance so that it becomes this like looping thing where they just bop to the beat in some way depending on how you want it to actually look and of course like yeah I have finished now the the first frame so now I'm working on like the other frames there are of course certain like they're like keyframes, not really keyframes, but like, I'm using like the mom car sprite sheet because I'm the most used to that one. And they're like, I, I understand the pattern of like, what sprite, or which frames, which frames are relevant. So every two frames is the proper movement, but like if you want a faster movement, you can have the uh, change between every frame. Like as an example, I, I fix his hair. And stuff in uh, in every like every frame, and also the sparkle in his eyes that I forgot to add until later on. But but like his actual movement is every second frame. To make that like so he doesn't like it, yeah it's just yeah so it looks more natural. Of course, I can't really explain much how you animate a sprite to look like have a natural movement that's kind of just something you learn so I can't really explain that I'm just saying how I animate this bright um, in the like practicality so yeah I'm, I'm basically done with the movement here I think it's just mostly like adjusting the hair and stuff so because there's a lot of frames when it comes to this specific sprite sheet uh, right um, one thing you gotta think about when you animate something, like, it really applies in general, but like, at least, like, in, uh, like, when animating sprites specifically, um, you gotta think of, like, where the sprite is anchored, if that makes sense. I will explain a bit better. Basically, the character, when it stands or sits or whatever, it is putting weight onto a certain point. Which means that that would be the point that moves the least when a character moves, because they're putting weight on that. And that would most usually be feet, or one leg, or whatever, like... So, and that applies in animation as well, not just drawing, because obviously it applies in drawing with, like, what le leg or whatever the character is putting their weight on, or what point of their body are they putting the weight on. And you gotta think of that when you animate as well, that's even more important, actually. Because, as I said, they won't move the part that they're putting the weight on nearly as much as the rest where they're not putting weight on. And that is where I call, where I say that the sprite is anchored. It's a place that's always the same throughout each sprite, or at least in basically the exact same place. And that most usually would be the feet considering they are pinned against the ground. So therefore, when I, when I make multiple frames, I always make the movement be pinned by the feet. So like the feet are always in the same place. But of course, it depends on when the characters pose, obviously, if they're like moving, then they could shift to one foot or whatever, but yeah. That's also something to think about when you generally like make sprites or look at you know, study sprite sheets. They are like that. So you gotta think, you gotta think about that. It's an important thing to keep in mind that I, um, of course, have learned by now, but like it, it took a while for me to actually learn how to do it properly. 
and but but yeah, it makes things a lot easier because when you trying to when you're like doing this like adding new sprites on top of a sprite pre-existing sprite sheet, you gotta think of where the uh, the frames are anchored to each other, like because I didn't understand them when I started making sprites for the first time. I I just like I I just put them kind of guessing where they would be. I didn't even like properly check how it like the frames would have correlated with each other. Like I didn't do that. But it's a lot easier to do it once you know that basically it's basically always gonna be pinned by the feet. So like yeah, I'll go on more later when I start moving the frames around on like how what I mean with all of this really. Okay, so no now I am moving frames onto where they should be in the sprite sheet. And basically how I do this is that when you use like a pre-existing sprite sheet as like a template or whatever for the uh, well yeah as a sprite sheet. <laughs> you could you basically when you when you make the when you animate the idol or whatever you're animating on the sprite sheet, it's a matter if it's not the idol because it applies to everything, but you basically you, you take like the original sprite that is like under because you, of course you it would be a best to stack the things on top of each other so you can actually see how you animate it. But then it will be all stacked on top of one single frame of the original sprite. So then you take that frame and you pull it over alongside the frames you've made uh, onto the next frame. And this is where it's important to understand where the original sprite is anchored. Um, so that it doesn't like the sprite the frame don't appear in the wrong places when you like that you didn't want them to be or whatever. Not like it might not turn out how you want it to be because of that, so you gotta pay attention, close attention to that. Of course, in this case, I didn't have used the original originals right because I already had a sketch for this. Um, it's kind of easier because you don't need to like it, you, you you should understand it basically fully if you've done it yourself. But obviously, you're gonna make sure so that's art correctly. And I don't think I managed to get it perfect, but it is close enough. Okay, so now that I'm done with it, uh, I go ahead and save it as a sprite sheet for the game. Of course I use modding plus, so I just have a folder for the character and I save the sprite sheet there. And that's it! This is the finished sprite! Yay! Hope this was helpful or interesting or something, I don't know. Goodbye.